modern applications have lots of dynamic service dependencies. And in those types of environments, those systems generate a ton of telemetry. Uh, and sort of as an industry, you know, the, the, the industry of observability has been focused on sort of bottoms up collecting all the data so that engineers can sift through that data uh, and try to figure out what's going on and why when something uh, bad happens. Uh, and so what we find is a lot of that data is noise. And so what Causely is focused on is cutting through that noise uh, to really just pinpoint what matters and to focus on assuring service levels and preventing latency and failures from happening uh, across the services that make up your application. Hi, this is Yohasap Bharatiya and welcome to TFR and Let's Talk. Today we have with us Yotam Yemeni, CEO of Causely. Yotam, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure and this is the first time I'm hosting you. So I'm kind of also curious and interested in learning the background of the company. Talk a bit about the company and also the name. Causally is a bit of a play on the uh, idea of causal reasoning. Uh, so we describe our product as a causal reasoning platform. Uh, and the company was founded by uh, Shmuel Klieger. Uh, and Shmuel's got decades of experience in, in IT operations and specifically in building uh, systems that uh, automate the management of, uh, of complex issues in IT operations type environments. And uh, what are you folks launching today? Uh, yeah, so we're really excited to announce the launch of our integration with OpenTelemetry. Uh, and so, uh, you know, OpenTelemetry is something we're excited about uh, because in, in ways it standardizes uh, ways to do telemetry collection uh, and metrics and traces. But, um, you know, OpenTelemetry is also really hard for people to adopt and, and particularly hard for people to get meaningful and actionable insights out of. Uh, and so what we do is we make it really effortless to get actionable insights uh, out of your open telemetry data uh, in a way that cuts through the, the, the noise and the overwhelming amount of sort of observability overload uh, that engineers deal with. Can you just go a bit deeper into what do you really mean by noise and overload here? Modern applications have lots of dynamic service dependencies. And in those types of environments, those systems generate a ton of telemetry. Uh, and sort of as an industry, you know, the, the industry of observability has been focused on sort of bottoms up collecting all the data so that engineers can sift through that data uh, and try to figure out what's going on and why when something uh, bad happens. Uh, and so what we find is a lot of that data is noise. And so what Causely is focused on is cutting through that noise uh, to really just pinpoint what matters and to focus on assuring service levels and preventing latency and failures from happening uh, across the services that make up your application. Thank you. And then we look at this noise. Uh, if you look at the whole cloud native landscape, or if we just look at pinpoint observability, there are so many solutions. Vendor sprawl is there, solution sprawl is there, which is a good thing. There are a lot of solutions, but it can be imitating for those who wants to use it. So can you also talk about, uh, uh, of course, the, the answer to the question why there are so many solutions is very simple. You know, companies can, organizations can come out with the solutions, but um, uh, how do you look at this sprawl problem as well, and how is Causely trying to address that? So, I mean, that's one of the reasons we intentionally built our system to be sort of decoupled from the, the sources of telemetry themselves, right? So we're really uh, excited today to launch this open telemetry integration, uh, but Causely doesn't only work with open telemetry. Uh, in fact, it doesn't matter whether you have proprietary agents in an environment uh, or open source ways to collect uh, data from your systems, uh, we've made our system interoperable uh, and we have an abstraction layer that sort of decouples our analysis and our system's uh, intelligence and insights from whatever type of telemetry uh, the environment uh, might offer. And so uh, I agree with what you said earlier. There are really good reasons why there are a lot of solutions in the space. I think, uh, you know, you look at, you know, I mentioned microservices earlier. And you know, in the last 10 to 15 years, it's become this sort of like predominant uh, pattern for how to design and build applications. Uh, and around the same time, sort of data pipelines also became really popular as sort of a paradigm shift. And I think anytime you have those sort of paradigm shifts, whether it's around microservices or data pipelines, you start to introduce new problems that new solutions are needed for. Uh, but again, we've tried to sort of decouple ourselves from the particular infrastructure, the particular programming language, or the particular agent or telemetry, uh, and really focused on being this intelligence layer sort of above the noise. 
Talk a bit about how does this integration uh, with open telemetry, as you said, you know, it's not just limited to open telemetry, uh, a lot of other proprietary solutions as well, but how does it actually help the engineering teams? Uh, if you think about uh, a lot of the uh, open telemetry discussions and discourse that's happening right now uh, in the community, there are a lot of debates about, you know, do I sample, do I not sample, how do I sample, how do I collect the right amount of data, but not too much data? Uh, and so I think it's uh, it's pretty well accepted that that this is a pain point to figure out what data do I need to collect. Uh, and so you know if you want to think about Causely as sort of like already having cracked that code, uh, we take the open telemetry traces and metrics uh, that we need to feed our model. And our models are really doing two things. Uh, one, they're building uh, an attribute dependency map, uh, and then the second thing is they're building uh, a causality map uh, of the environment. And then with that attribute dependency map and with that causality map, what we're doing is we're automatically uh, able to understand what depends on what and what causes what to happen in an environment. So we're able to infer causality and understand you know, the various variables in an environment. And then we're able to use that understanding to actually make predictions and, and provide prescriptive actions uh, in order to resolve and prevent uh, issues from happening in the first place. So. Uh, in terms of how we're helping, we're trying to sort of raise the discussion up from, you know, being worried about which data to collect and saying, hey, look, you just point what you have at Causely. Causely will already make sense of the existing metrics and traces into our common data model and then apply analytics on that data so that you're actually getting insights out of that data. Uh, and all that happens like in a matter of seconds. I mean, literally, you install one of our machines in your cloud. Uh, your data stays in your cloud, uh, and, and this starts to uh, provide insights within a matter of seconds or minutes. Do you support all cloud, public cloud, private cloud, on-prem, or is you know a specific cloud that you are targeting right now? It works across any of the major cloud providers. It works on-prem. Uh, you know the 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 thing we again we said I said it a bit earlier is we intentionally tried to decouple what we were building from any particular infrastructure or any programming language. Uh, I give you a little bit of background on the founding team. You know, this is also a team that previously built a company called Turbonomic, where you know it was a similar approach that we took, sort of decoupled the uh, analysis layer that we were building and the system that we were building from any particular type of underlying infrastructure or any particular cloud provider, you know, or any particular programming language. That's one of the sort of the beauties of our approach in terms of abstracting uh, the problem through our common data model. As you also mentioned, there's a lot of data there, what data to collect, what data not to collect. In general, it is like just collect every data and then we'll deal with it later on. So how are you seeing the evolution and also are you seeing the, the, the space is becoming more sophisticated where, you know, pick and choose the data that you actually need versus, you know, just grabbing everything and then figure things out later on. I just want to understand your perspective on the evolution of this space. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, you have to sort of start with what's your goal to begin with. And I think if you sort of look at how we've built uh, Causely and what problem we're trying to solve, we are really focusing first on, okay, tops down, what is the goal we want to solve, which is to assure the performance of an application. So I think there are a lot of other reasons why somebody might want to collect uh, data about their systems, uh, security being, you know, an, an example, right? We're not focused on security, obviously. We're focused on assuring application performance. And so I think that I do find, you're asking about the patterns I see, I do see a lot of larger companies starting to stand up pretty sophisticated uh, observability teams, pretty highly paid engineering teams, lots of money spent on infrastructure and tooling to try to build in-house systems to do all sorts of things with that data. And some of those use cases are probably valid, uh, you know, but, I, but I think as far as it relates to, to Causely and it, as far as it also relates to those teams, if those teams are trying to collect that data for the purpose of figuring out how to assure the performance of their applications, I think that's the code that we've already cracked. Uh, and we certainly have a, a value proposition here of you don't have to go through a two to three year research science project on your data to figure out, hey, what of this is meaningful and how do I use this to actually drive the business outcome that I want, which is I want to spend less time troubleshooting. I want to end up in fewer war room scenarios where I, you know, I, I need domain experts who understand what this data means. Uh, and ideally, I want to you know, reduce the number of incidents that happen in the first place. And so I think there, there's a subset of folks that are out there trying to build uh, their own solutions to do those for those enterprises. Uh, and that's for whom we have a really uh, effective solution. And then there are other use cases and, and sophisticated things people are trying to do with this data. 
you know, that candidly I'm not too opinionated about because it's not our domain, it's not our focus. Now, I also will talk a bit about uh, when we look at the integration with open telemetry, uh, talk a bit about uh, what does it entail from the team side? Uh, and second is also, what kind of uh, pricing model are you using uh, where teams can look into it, start playing with it, and then just move to a, you know enterprise version. I just want to understand the whole you know planning you have for it. If you already have open telemetry uh, in your environment and you are sending uh, data to an open telemetry collector, you can point that open telemetry collector at Causely. Uh, again, Causely is going to be running in your cloud in your environment, and so uh, the data from your open telemetry collector goes to Causely. On the other hand, if you're not yet using open telemetry, but you want to, uh, we have a way to use eBPF to auto instrument traces uh, in your environment. So we auto instrument open telemetry for you. Uh, we're doing that using an open source project. So again, it's not a proprietary agent or collector of our own, it's, it's open source, uh, but we just try to help people get started faster with open telemetry. Uh, and so either of those two models works, right? So either with our own eBPF based auto instrumentation uh, and pointing that data into Causely or with the open telemetry collector that you already have and pointing that into Causely. And then in terms of the pricing model, uh, again, our system, uh, for the most part, what's happening is uh, processing uh, data locally in your cloud. Uh, the actual footprint of that, you know, is not very big. It's a, it's a container, you know, small, you know, couple uh, uh, vCPUs, you know, eight gigs of RAM is usually pretty good for a cluster, you know, obviously depending on the size of the cluster but it's not a big infrastructure footprint is the point. Uh, and then to your point about pricing, so obviously there's a very small amount of infrastructure cost there that you take on, it, probably not even a rounding error in your cloud budget. Uh, and then for us, you know, we price based on the number of workloads uh, that uh, are being analyzed in the environment. Uh, and the, the workloads are sort of analogous to the number of service dependencies that exist in the environment. And the reason why we decided to price in that uh, way is because the more service dependencies that exist in an environment, the harder it is to do the type of causal inference that Causally is doing on a continuous basis uh, in your runtime production environment. Uh, and so that's why we've we've sort of picked that as the pricing metric. And then in terms of uh, in terms of how do you get started, we offer a free trial right on the website. So you can go to Causally.ai, uh, click the free trial button. Uh, we actually give you access to a demo environment so you can sort of play with some dummy data uh, and a dummy app that we've built. Uh, and then of course, there's some self-service steps there to, uh, to get started. Uh, and then of course, uh, at a certain point when you get through the free trial, if you wanna keep using it, uh, you, know, you can either contact sales or put in a credit card to keep going. What kind of a scope do you see of these solutions where the teams will only be required to take an action when it's really required and then most of things will be working in a very, very autonomous manner? Causely's on a journey. Uh, and we do believe that this uh, idea about agentic systems and autonomous service reliability, as we sometimes talk about it, uh, it's a journey. And, you know, like I said, we've, we've been there before. Uh, we were on a journey previously at a company called Turbonomic in sort of the previous wave, which was around AI ops. Uh, and, and Shmuel Klieger, our founder, you know, studied computer science and AI sort of in the first wave of AI back in the 70s and 80s. So uh, I think the, the net of, of it is, it's a journey. Uh, I think right now what we're finding from our customers is that even just our ability, uh, our system's ability to pinpoint where is the problem or where will my problem be, where will be my choke point, where will latency uh, happen and propagate from or propagate to, um, that already is valuable to our early users. Uh, and then we are uh, pushing those insights uh, into systems, you know, chat ops uh, type setups like Slack, uh, ticketing and service systems like uh, Jira. Uh, and, you know, as much as customers are ready to start automating the actions and insights that are being generated by our system, we're there to meet them where they are in that journey of adopting AI and adopting automation. Um, but we, uh, let's put it this way, we're, we're trying not to uh, just follow a trend to follow a trend. We're trying to have a very practical and pragmatic approach to help a customer sort of crawl, walk, run in terms of trusting the insights from our system, turning those insights into action. And then like we saw with, with Turbonomic with our last company, usually a customer wants to go through some iterations 
of manually executing actions based on the insights generated by our system before they try to actually turn on automation. Uh, so we're there when we're ready, when they are ready, uh, but we try to, again, meet the customer where they are on that journey. If possible, can you also talk about uh, who is leveraging your solutions? Of course, if you want, you can name the company or you can just name some use cases. So, so far, you know, we've been in market with this product now for uh, for several months. Um, obviously, this open telemetry integration is something we're launching today, but uh, we've had many deployments of Causely. Uh, some of our customers uh, include publicly traded SaaS companies like Yext. Uh, we also have uh, private software companies like Quantumetric. Um, we have some larger banks that we cannot uh, obviously disclose and, and name uh, for obvious reasons. Um, also large MarTech companies and large telco companies. Um, and, uh, and I think other than that, uh, also a couple, uh, healthcare tech companies, uh, also using it. Uh, I think the, what we're doing is sort of applicable across any industry, uh, as long as you have, uh, you know, I'd say 40 to 50 engineers plus it's likely that if you have more than 50 engineers, you also have a complex microservices oriented modern application that is going to start to present some gnarly uh, behaviors uh, and Causely is there to help you automatically infer and understand what's going on there and what to do about it. Tom, thank you so much for joining me today and talk about not only the company, but your announcement today. Thanks for great insights and I look forward to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Looking forward to it.